Well, I've got some bump stops today that I'm working on. These are some uh, four inch stroke bump stops right now. And I'm gonna actually make uh, some spacers for these to shorten them up and turn these into about some inch and a half stroke uh, bump stops. So I figured I'd make a little video, kind of uh, tear them apart, show you how to do it, make a little spacer that goes around uh, here on the inside of them and shorten these up. And you know, the reason why I'm doing these and shortening them up, these are on the uh, rear of a Leaf Spring Ranger. And the problem that these have with the four inch stroke um, this truck only has about like six inches of uh, up travel from ride height with the way it's all set up right now and With these being four inch strokes and with the bump and then another half inch or so for the shock safety These things are only about an inch inch and a half off of the bump stop from ride height um, depending on how much fuels in the fuel cell on this thing um, So this thing is getting into the bumps way too early in the stroke um, It's really important to have the axle and have the shock set up to where the tire can actually move and you can actually use your shock to dampen the tire um, and not have the bump hitting the bump stop too early if you have uh, a lot more travel to go so for this thing we're gonna get it set up at inch and a half so that way it's gonna gain a uh, two and a half inches of up travel from ride height before these bumps engage and hopefully uh, make the rear of this thing not get so much of that pogo stick of uh, effect kind of going through some rollers and whoops um, you'll get a lot of that with the bumps hitting the pads um, that bump is just filled with nitrogen and it's like a pogo stick when this thing goes up there's no dampening coming down on it it's just trying to push that axle back down um, so that's interrupting your shock travel and all that type of stuff so um, we're gonna get these shortened up and it should help those uh, shocks uh, perform on the Ranger that these are going on a whole lot better and actually uh, should make the truck ride a lot better just shorten these up so um, i'm just going to throw this on time lapse and get one of these things torn apart and show you what the insides look like and then kind of go over the uh, spacer i'm going to make to put in there to shorten them up all right so i got the bump stop cap off this is what you're looking in there with the uh, shaft kind of all the way up there's the top nut uh, so I got to take that off and then I can pull the shaft out of there and then that's where I'm going to end up making the spacer to go is inside there but um, got the oil that was in it dumped in over here and for the top cap I ended up having to use the uh, this is the bolt style and I was able to use both of the nuts locked on there with uh, two big wrenches and uh, able to break it free the uh, spanner wrench I had was not able to uh, it was only a two prong I wasn't able to break it free so I was able to do that and uh, break it free. Probably got to be careful to probably not snap that off. I don't know how thick it is in there, but anyway, that's the top cap. Got that off, and now I'm gonna get this nut pulled off of here, and uh, yeah, then we'll pull it apart and do some measuring and make a spacer, and pretty much just put it back together. All right, so I got. Uh, this one bump stop, I still got to tear apart this other one here, but I got this bump stop torn apart so you can kind of see the parts that's in here, the uh, shaft that's here, all the internals here. I usually take like a long screwdriver or like this IFP puller and stick it down in there in the center to make sure you pull everything out, the uh, shims that's on there and this little uh, piston. And then here is the uh, spacer that's in this right now that limits. So if this goes on here, this is the spacer that limits uh, what this can come out the end of this. So, uh, or there we go. So with this shock, it's gonna stop about like right here. So I'm actually gonna make a new spacer to put in this shock that's, uh, we'll have to measure it up, but to end up getting about an inch and a half of travel out of these. So it's gonna end up being a big sleeve, about yay big. Um, and put everything all back together just how you see I always get a uh, some sort of container to dump uh, the oil This oil still looks good um, So I'll just end up using dump that back in when we go to put this thing all back together um, so that's all I need to do now is measure up uh, the bump and Make up some spacers, but before I do I'll probably rip apart this other shock and then get to making the two spacers So I'll get doing that now So I went ahead and uh, made some spacers. I got these all done. Made two of them here. 
to uh, make up the distance I needed. Just took a measurement and made the spacer two and a half inches and added it in there. So this is what the inside of the bump looks like. Um, this is what's gonna be showing now on the shaft with the spacers added on there. There's the old spacer and then uh, with the new spacer on there. Um, this is just some like uh, inch and a half DOM tube. That's 120 wall. Um, this shaft is an inch and a quarter shaft, so fits on there nice and snug, um, fits inside the tube. And so now when this thing is all back together and inside the body here, um, that thing will be bottomed out like that and no longer allow the uh, four inches of uh, shaft that was coming out before. So now this will be an inch and a half bump. So generally when you buy bumps, um, and you order them from a company, if the, you know, they have a four inch or a three inch or a two inch option, something like that, they're generally all the exact same bump. It's just a matter of uh, what kind of size spacer they're gonna put in this and ship it. You know, some spaces are aluminum like this one is, some of them are steel, that's why I've made just a spacer like that. Depends on the brand, depends on what it is, but that is how you uh, can make a spacer and change the uh, adjustment on your height on your uh, bump stop. So all you're gonna do now is pretty much just put this all back in reverse. Um, stack all this stuff in. You know, when I took everything off, I just take it off and go back to front how I took it off. So I'll kind of do uh, just uh, clean a wipe down and uh, inspect everything, get all the dirt out of uh, some of these stuff and uh, put them back together and uh, the uh, new uh, inch and a half bump stops. all back together uh, they just need some nitrogen charged in them uh, make sure they work right and they still come out but they should be shortened up now at uh, one and a half inches so there we go just like that pops out got the regular set at 180 psi right now there, that one came out a lot smoother that one's got 180 Got 180. Um, looks like they're holding pressure, no oil's leaking. Uh, I usually let them, uh, anytime I'm doing anything with shocks, leave the pressure in them overnight. Just make sure uh, they still hold pressure in the morning at when you put them in. I probably can't make 180 go down, but nonetheless, there we have it. Uh, some four inch bumps turned into some one and a half inch bumps, just like that just by making uh, one little tube spacer to put in the insides of both of these. It's now, if you saw that shaft with that nut on there with the piston and the shims on there, the original spacer that was in there, and now the uh, two and a half inch spacer that I've added. All that's in there and now all that stuff stacked in there on top of that nut holding it on, now doesn't allow that shaft to drop out anymore. So. You uh, virtually can make these any dimension you want, depending on that space that you make, if you end up making it. Um, so you can get really specific with your suspension and where your bumps engage, um, especially if you've got some like bypass tube shocks. Um, you can really utilize all stages of your shock that you have with the travel that you have on your suspension. So there you go, thanks for watching.